In this video, I'll share some updates on training the bipedal legs to balance. Since the last video, I've extended the policy to control both the hip and the knee joints, so I can now start to raise the height of the legs. I'll show the full results towards the end of this video if you want to hang around. But first, a quick summary of the project so far. I've been building a set of servo-driven bipedal robot legs. I figured they would provide a good platform for playing around with reinforcement learning. So far, I've been using a deep deterministic policy gradient approach, trying to train the legs to balance. Anyway, it's all controlled with a Raspberry Pi. There are three servos per leg, and it uses an inertial measurement unit attached to the torso. Maybe the only notable difference from most robot legs out there is that I've gone with some gently curved feet. The idea with these feet is that when the center of gravity is low, namely when the legs are squatting, the robot itself is actually stable. It balances fine by itself. So this should allow me to initiate the whole learning process of collecting some training data and training an initial control policy. Now as the legs extend, the center of gravity rises, which changes the dynamics of the legs a bit, eventually reaching the point where they naturally start to fall over. So I'm hoping that by starting off low, I can iteratively train a policy that will keep the legs stable as I gradually raise the center of gravity. So that's the plan anyway. If you want some more of the background how I went about training, you can have a look at some of the previous videos. So, what are the updates for this video? Well, previously, the policy controlled only the hip joint for balancing, and in the reward, the difference between the actual pitch angle and the set point angle were used. Now, the policy has been updated, so that it also estimates the required knee joint position. Therefore, in the reward, we can also include the knee joint set point and actual values and use this to help drive the training. So how did things go? Well, firstly, a baseline. Let's see how the legs perform when I manually control things. On the right, you can see some of the data from the legs. The top image shows the measured pitch angle of the torso, as well as the actual position of the hip. The lower image shows the knee position. At a low knee height, the legs are reasonably stable by themselves. When the knee height gets to a value of around minus 0.5, things change a bit. There must be some flatter spots on the feet towards the toe and heel ends. The legs seem to settle okay when leaning backwards, or forwards, but can no longer balance towards the center of the feet. And with the knee height up around minus 0.45, well, so much for my manual balancing skills. So how did the trained reinforcement learning policy go? Starting off at a low knee height. Remember, the policy was trained to simply track the pitch and knee set points. As the knee set point increases, things are looking good. Even at a height of around minus 0.5, the legs are still balancing around the middle of the curved feet. As we go higher, the tracking accuracy decreases a bit, but they still seem to be balancing okay until around minus 0.35, things get a little unstable. Which is not too surprising, as it is reaching the limits of the data used in training. Overall, I think the results are kind of encouraging. The trained policy seems to be doing its job of tracking the pitch and knee set points, even as the leg height goes beyond the naturally stable region. Next steps, to see how high they can go. But before that, I probably need to upgrade the leg hardware. 